Hello and welcome to Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. And if you'd like to support this free service, then please go to paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland. Now, I hope you're well. I hope you're able to have a bit of time to spend with me to calm your mind down to just be in this moment so I've been thinking about that lately about actually just being here you know where you are right now not just physically but in your mind you know not thinking about the future not dwelling on the past not even thinking about the next 10 minutes but just being in this moment what I've noticed apart from it being quite peaceful it almost feels like time doesn't exist it might seem like a a strange sentence but when you're doing something you're watching television when I watch television I can feel time going by when I'm outside on a bus I can feel time going by because people are travelling around people are moving they're doing things even when I'm sitting in a chair I'm thinking about the future I can almost feel the time moving sometimes as if I'm moving into the future in my brain in my mind and then when I'm thinking about the past reminds me of the time that's gone past the time all those years that have gone by since whatever it is that I'm thinking about or even sitting talking to somebody I can get a sense of the time moving but when I just sit and have my eyes closed or maybe have my eyes open whatever, whichever I want to do just sit I like to do it outside if it's a nice day but just sit there or stand there make sure I keep your eyes open if you're standing up it's probably a good idea but just get in touch with now not in an esoteric or spiritual level just in a factual way now how do you feel right now and then ask yourself again how do I feel right now and that feeling of relaxation or there might be feelings of discomfort in certain parts of your body it changes and there's that sense within us I think I feel that that it's almost like we don't change we're somehow fixed 
fixed in a you know specific way, like oh I've got a, I've got a pain in my stomach, therefore that's all there is. When actually that physical it's a physical sensation. You take away the word and it's a physical sensation. And that physical sensation doesn't stay the same. It changes. And it changes depending on what you think about as well. So if someone's got a, a pain in their stomach and they start thinking about um, all the possible worst case scenarios, then there's a good chance that pain in the stomach would increase and become more uncomfortable. If on the other side, you know, you think to yourself, oh, I'll probably just need to do a big fart. I'll just, <laughs> I'll just wait for a while and then I'll feel fine. Regardless of whether or not that's true, you'll actually feel different. Because that's how it works. It's how our bodies and our brains work affected by what we think about and of course just saying stop thinking is a very easy two words to say but for some it seems practically impossible to do I'm kind of lucky because I haven't got much going on in my head so I'm just really slow so <laughs> Everything I'm already moving quite slowly in some ways, and plus, I've got quite a few years of meditation practice behind me. And when I used to meditate quite a lot at one point, and so I guess that has helped. But there's something about getting in touch with how you feel, but not, not judging it. Because it goes against, I think it goes against our natural instincts to focus on something that is unpleasant, whether it's a feeling, or specifically a feeling really, or a thought. But the thought's only a problem because of the feeling that comes up after the thought. If you thought about something that wasn't very nice, but you felt great. I suppose you should see a therapist, but other than that, it's not going to be a problem, necessarily. So it's the feeling that arises after the thought. And that avoidance that we all have within us to avoid the thing that hurts. And it's natural and it's completely understandable. I mean, the most logical thing in the world is to avoid pain. It's logical. And to avoid stress and to avoid anxiety. That's logic. However, on the flip side, it's not realistic because there's always going to be situations, issues, problems, challenges. Even if you sit in your house and you never leave, there's still issues that come up. And with physical issues, there can also a lot of people that have anxiety perhaps is because of a chronic physical issue, condition. And some of that stress may come through trying to avoid that physical or trying to avoid thinking about it or even 
addressing it. Because that's the logical thing to do, is to avoid discomfort and to move towards comfort. It's logic and it makes sense, but it's not realistic. Because in order to have comfort and pleasure, we also need to be open to pain and suffering. It's not necessarily about welcoming it, although I have mentioned that in previous recordings. When you say, come on then, give me all you got, something changes. The way we think and the way we feel, the way we react changes because you're no longer scared and I'm no longer scared. It's almost like standing up to a bully and it's rewarding, there's a reward that comes from that which is beyond measure emotionally. then it opens up the idea of, well, is my body bullying me because I've got chronic pain? No, not really. But if you look at it from an angle of, you're not going to allow that physical sensation to control you then you're standing up to it. You're addressing it. Just like with stress, with stressful situations, with feelings in the body. By addressing it, by saying, okay, not sure what this is, and something, I'll mention this, there's probably some people listening to this that are perhaps my kind of age, it's going to be young people, it's going to be people a lot older possibly. But what I've noticed as I've got older is some of the symptoms of stress I personally have experienced could have been something different. So, and to give an example, and uh, I was ill yesterday and I called up NHS Direct. I didn't call up for the, the hospital or anything, I didn't call up emergency services. I was having palpitations in my heart or my chest. I didn't feel as if it was a panic attack. I didn't have that. I did feel panicky a little. I was worried and concerned, but not in a way that I have been in the past. And I was a bit struggling with my breath, and I thought, okay. I left it for an hour, did some relaxation exercises, and it did help. But then when I stopped doing the relaxation exercises, it kind of came back. I was like, oh, what's this? So I called up NHS Direct, which is a, it's a national helpline in England. And they asked me questions and they said, we're sending an ambulance. I said, well, I don't really want an ambulance. If you think I need to go to the hospital, I'll just get a taxi and go. They said, it's too late, we've already phoned an ambulance. We have to, based on my age, based on, you know, um, the details I gave. Never in my life have I had an ambulance come to me. I've gone to the emergency ward at least twice, maybe three times with pain, you know, chest stuff, and it ended up being panic attacks. But this felt different. 
I think that the point of this story is don't ignore what's going on so by actually addressing it you're also not ignoring it you can't ignore and address something at the same time and it might be something important it might be something that you need to get checked out it probably isn't but it might be and just keeping that in mind could save your life and I'm not trying to be dramatic um, just trying to be real you know don't ignore physical issues just because um, you might think to yourself well it's just stress just the anxiety even though it may have been many times in the past doesn't mean it is definitely that so it's worth getting yourself checked out just to make sure okay so that's important I'm not saying everyone rushed to the hospital because that's not once I'm not saying that at all but if it's something to do with your chest your breathing and it feels completely different from a panic attack another thing I would say is and this is something I've only done twice but it's really worth doing just turn into an advice an advice recording this if you've got someone that lives near you someone that you can knock on their door or phone them up any time of the day and I, I know we've not always got someone I've not got many people like that perhaps two people that I could phone up and one of them might not have the phone on but he lives downstairs so I can knock on his door just to be with you even if it is on the phone because sometimes just that distraction is the difference between the recovery time from the anxiety event So basically, the NHS direct person on the phone said, we're sending an ambulance. Have you got anyone you can contact to be with you for when the ambulance arrives? And I said, well, I can knock on my friend's door downstairs. Bearing in mind this was quarter to one in the morning, I think it was. And, and I did, and he was awake, and he came up. And it did distract me. I still had some of the feelings, and it, but it did start to subside. And it was about two and a half hours before the ambulance actually arrived, because they're busy, and the paramedics were brilliant. They did a it's an ECG thing, you know. They put all those label stickers on my chest and my stomach, and um, checked my blood pressure everything was perfect everything even gave me a diabetes test perfect so by the time that they had finished examining me and showing me the results I felt fine I felt guilty I felt ashamed, I'll be honest, I did. I felt tearful, in fact. I felt like a fraud. That's how I felt. But that wasn't fair on me to feel that way. Well, I wasn't being fair on myself. Because I legitimately thought and was concerned for my health. I didn't call an ambulance they called it I didn't you know I felt guilty there's also what's ridiculous about it is while while my ECG my heart monitor was being done 
I was almost hoping that they'd find something just so that I hadn't wasted their time. Just so that I was actually not I didn't want it to be stress. I didn't want it to be some kind of anxiety provoking thing. Because this part of me thinks that should never happen again. Even though I would never say that to another person. I would never tell another person, you know, it's ridiculous. You you know, you should be over this by now. How can you help other people if you've not completely got over it yourself? Well, you know what? I'm going to be doing this stuff for a long time. There might come a time when I'm very ill. And guarantee you, if I was diagnosed with cancer, I would be making recordings of people with cancer. So anyone saying you, know, you can't do stuff helping people unless you're completely well yourself. Well, that would be, we wouldn't have many doctors left. Wouldn't be that many paramedics or nurses. Because there's a huge rate of anxiety and stress within the mental health sector. People, you know, psychiatrists, social workers, psychologists. It's a massive issue with people from all places especially high stress jobs like working in the health service whether private or you know public so realistically there's no reason for any of us to feel guilty and I realise when I'm talking about I felt guilty I felt ashamed I'm talking about myself. I'm talking about how I felt. I'm not talking about how anyone else should feel. Because I don't tell anyone how they should feel. It's none of my business. I'm not in a position to tell another person how to feel. I can offer a few tips. I can offer my experience. I can offer some professional experience as a therapist some personal experience from many years of mental health issues going back to childhood all the books I've read all the things I've studied all the people that I've counselled and helped but it doesn't mean I can tell someone else how to be or how to live or how you should feel just like you can't do that to anyone either you know we we can try but the reality is the only thing we could do really is work on ourselves and part of the reason I haven't made one of these recordings for a little while is because I've had a bit of a rough time like you know with the bipolar I've had a bit of a difficult emotional time and when I'm like that I feel like a fraud I feel like why how can I make recordings um, making out that I can help others when uh, you know I can't even help myself that, that kind of mentality which is not helpful to me and I've had quite a lot of feedback telling me that actually what I do is helpful and it can also be helpful to hear somebody else's honesty because there's lots of things you'll find on YouTube, lots of stuff you'll find where there's an expert. This is how you do this, and this is what you do, and that's it, and just follow this special technique. And 
perhaps they don't share their own experiences or maybe they haven't had their own personal experiences um, which I doubt actually because everybody has had experiences of stress everyone even people that don't think they have have because it comes out in different ways doesn't it it's, it expresses itself in different ways and this seemed to be expressing itself in my physicality how I felt physically rather than how I felt emotionally because yesterday I was wide awake I remember because I've been tired I go through periods when I'm tired and I sleep a lot and in other periods when I'm really on it, you know, kind of really awake, alert. And the last two days I've been really alert. Yesterday, I was sitting on my laptop thinking, why don't I want to go to bed? Like, for a nap or something like that, because that's what I've been doing for two weeks, just going for a little nap. And I didn't want to, wide awake. So it's almost... You could say I'm going through it's not manic because I don't really get manic I'm on medication it's more hyper hypermania but like a very low level which then kicks in the adrenaline causes can cause symptoms of well, the adrenaline goes, you know, the, the heart can feel like it's fluttering, but actually nothing's happening. You feel it, but nothing's happening. It's not physically, nothing physical is really going on, although you feel it. And that's what's a strange thing about it. I remember years ago sitting in a call centre, feeling as if my heart was about to literally and that's an old cliche it felt like it was going to pop out my chest I felt like everyone must be able to see my heart pumping it was like bah, 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 like that but it wasn't because I would have died I, would, I wouldn't have survived that it wasn't doing what I thought it was doing it's just how I felt it I could feel my heart in my head I felt like I could feel my pulse you know, in different parts of my body, which we do have the pulse in different parts of our body, I know, but it's almost as if it's taken over sometimes. So I suppose one of the things I was trying to get to today was how do we distinguish between what is real as far as a physical issue and what is caused by stress. But then, physical issues, real physical issues, can be caused by stress. So how do we get to the point, or how do I get to the point, of, you might say, yeah, can you please get to the point, Jason? It's unlikely, I always like to take time. Getting to the point of, I think the clue, I think the solution maybe is getting to know yourself. Continuously observing yourself. Being in the now, you know, as often as possible. Almost like checking in. So, you've got a child who's gone to France for the weekend on a school trip never been away from home never been out of the country before you've never had a night without your child being there maybe if you could you would want to check in with your child every hour probably just to make sure that he or she is okay not because you're necessarily interested in what they're doing 
because you, you know, you're probably enjoying them being away so you can have some time to do stuff. But you just want to make sure they're okay without being intrusive or too, or too intrusive. So perhaps we can do that ourselves. Have a little tune in. I can only I might take 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Just how am I feeling? What is the feeling? And just observe it. Because when you do that, you're in the moment. You're not saying to yourself, how am I going to feel tomorrow? How did I feel 22 years ago? You know, you think about now. How am I feeling now? How are you feeling now? In this moment. Without judging it. Without preempting. You know, just being with yourself. Like, okay, how am I now? And then just move on with whatever else you're doing. Maybe every hour, maybe just bring yourself back to how you're feeling. Even if it is just for 10 seconds, even if it's just for 5 seconds, how are you feeling? You can get in touch with your body, notice the floor underneath your feet, or if you're on a chair. Notice the chair supporting your bum and your body. Maybe noticing your hands that might be resting on a keyboard. You know? Noticing the temperature of the room. Just noticing the people around you. Noticing the sounds, the mixture of sounds, not any particular sound. There might be different voices that you can hear from around the office, for example. You may hear the wind, you may hear the air conditioning, you might hear the sound of the computers, you might hear the sound of the printer in the distance. It's just sound, but not focusing on any particular thing, just being with it in that moment for those few seconds. Almost like a breath. Each breath, there's no, there's no breath more important than the one we take right now. Your next breath is the most important breath that you'll ever take. No other breath, no other breath you've ever taken is more important than the breath you take right now. It's kind of just being in the moment. It's you know, very meditative. It's very, I suppose, almost kind of hypnotic in a sense. But at the same time, it's relaxing. It's calming. But it's also opening yourself up to what is. You know? Not trying to push away anything not focusing on your right thigh because it feels nice compared to perhaps your left ankle which may have been sprained so you're not focusing on that because you don't want to feel that feeling you want to focus on something different but in that 5 or 10 seconds or 20, 30 seconds or a minute whatever you give yourself you're not focusing on any particular part. You're just focusing on the whole of yourself. And if that left ankle is asking for attention, then give it your attention. That's all that pain wants, is your attention. And 
maybe to do something about it, if at all possible. And if you are doing whatever is needed, and all that needs is time, or perhaps you've done everything and there's nothing more you can do, you can give it your attention, and that's all it needs. And then it can let you get on with what you're doing. Just like a baby, sometimes all they need is your attention. They'll wake up, they'll cry, and as soon as you go over, they see you. Maybe you pick the baby up for 30 seconds, lay it down again, and she or he goes back to sleep. Because they've got what they needed, they wanted your attention. That's what your body needs. That's what your mind needs. That's what you need. You need your own attention. We all have a sense of need and validation from others. And it's that's kind of a standard thing and it's not always healthy what we do need is validation for ourselves from ourselves we need that we may think that we need validation from others but we don't but we do need validation from ourselves we do need to understand and accept ourselves and say to ourselves it's okay I'm okay going to be okay and to have that love for yourself not ooey gooey love not like some kind of I said it's, this isn't esoteric it's not spiritual it's not religious this is just love caring deeply caring for yourself like you would a baby a small child someone could be, could be you know someone that you look at it could be could be your cat for me it's my favorite andre i look at him and i love him with everything i've got i love him and he's annoying as anything but i do absolutely adore him and if i could get a part of that feeling and aim it towards myself. If I could get that feeling and plug it in, you know, almost like a disc into my own heart and aim it at me. My life would be transformed. So it's not about doing it all in one go. It's about starting it. It's about starting to realize that you are worthy of your own love, your own kindness, your own consideration, your own acceptance. Consideration. You're worthy of all that and more. So I'm going to leave you on this recording and I said a few things and as, as usual it's, you know, I go off on tangents and but there is a message here somewhere and I hope that it's of use and I hope you realise I'm coming from a I'm trying to come from a kind place and a trying to be an understanding from an understanding place but I don't know what it's like to be you you don't know what it's like to be me none of us like, knows what it's like to be other people even if we experience very similar situations it's going to be different for everybody 
but by sharing our experience, by hearing what someone else is going through or has gone through and by considering different ideas that may not have even been you know even in your mind before just an idea can change the way you think and feel and I like I think of these ideas that I kind of mention throughout a recording as being like a buffet so you go to a buffet and you just try stuff you know you've got lots of different food lots of finger food not actual fingers but you know sausages and pasties and um, cheese puffs and quiche Lorraine and I'm trying to think of stuff you haven't, but it's lots of different sandwiches, it's lots of different things. And there's going to be stuff there maybe you've never tried before. Maybe stuff you've looked at before in the past and thought, ugh, no thanks. Maybe things you've looked at before and thought, maybe. He's eating it and he seems to like it. So it's a case of just testing. And if you don't like it, don't eat it. So it's like a buffet. That's what these recordings are like. Just a big old buffet full of ideas that you can test, try on, as and when you please. So I'm going to go. I want to thank you for listening and remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy take care